come along with me to New York. I was going to New York for my friend's event, uh, Terminal Feud. It's Family Feud knockoff show. I did a red eye flight actually and arrived at 6 a.m. So immediately went and met up with everyone. They're trying to channel the their inner Steve Harvey to be the optimal hosts for the show. This is like Steve would wear this. Satiny green would also, I think, under a studio oh. lights would would look really good. Yeah, It'd give the desired effect, and they might have some in sizes for... that would work for both of you. Like they've got a fair oh, amount dude. of them. Look at that. Right yeah. Oh, this already. That actually appeared. looks like it fits yeah, quite well. It's fit, fitted. We were originally told when we walked in that they wouldn't be able to do a same day suit rental, so we were. A little concerned but funnily enough all of the fun colors were all in the clearance section so it kind of worked out perfectly for us all of the clearance shirts for some reason were just massive so we did end up looking in another section and there was this really nice kind of cream colored shirt with forest green leaves on it and honestly i think this like suit and shirt combo and even just the suit itself it's fun because it's a color that's kind of fun enough to be on a game show but at the same time they could totally wear that to a wedding or something like that and it would look really good very successful very successful and on clearance yeah <laughs> yeah so that's for me yeah. even with company money that's a big deal yeah. well we weren't we couldn't even get a rental today yeah it was like same no. day you can't do it yeah, yeah. Won't but work no so we had to buy a suit but what a, oh, what a deal, yeah. what a what a deal. Mm. this whole trip i was so tired i was just living off of caffeine i swear that was the only thing keeping me going i was shocked that was like prime's like fourth cup of coffee for the day i think this is how he has so much energy we moved on to the venue and just were getting it all set up, doing some lighting testing, getting all the tables going. And that was really great. This is where I finally ran into low level learning. It was so nice to see him again and all the all the rest of the pals. Update, the setup of the space is going really well. I've done bare minimum, just kidding. I've been uh, kind of stepping in just to help with lighting and all of that, but Thankfully, no technical questions are being asked yet. My nails broke, which I had a feeling was gonna happen, so I fixed them. I did some uh, little press-on nails in the bathroom just now. I Houdini'd out of the uh, prep work and just fixed them because they were catching on everything, and I was like, that's gonna be a, a pain. Plus, razzle-dazzle, maybe I can blind Dax while he's trying to figure out who hit the beeper first, and it'll just auto go to me for the bling you know but yeah so far so good it's been nice to hang out with the friends again and I feel like most of the rest of the setup is all fairly technical so not much I can do there skill issue mostly oh hey long time no talk I'm partnering with some of your favorite streamers tech twitter celebrities in a game of family feud tonight I'm either going to absolutely demolish the competition or fail colossally in which case post me on live stream fails if i fail epically but otherwise i think we can absolutely demolish the competition i'm very competitive so i think we have the edge all right the competitive edge i got to meet these two legends madison canna and soycotic they were both incredible and it was so nice to have some girl time not be the only girl in the room for once <laughs> thank you for inviting some chicks <laughs> The next day, TJ and Prime were hosting their annual NeoVim conference. I got to meet ABD, who helps with a lot of the organization behind the scenes. It was super great to meet everyone. And between the talks, I was actually working on charm stuff, duh, and attempting to smack TJ in the face with a coffee bag. Did not work. For some reason, chat didn't clip the one time that I actually hit him, but I've included the fail montage for your entertainment, okay? I did my best, all right? We'll get him one day. After sitting around all day, we decided to go for a walk in Central Park and then walk back to wherever we were going to meet up with everyone for dinner. 
it's so important to surround yourself with people who want to see you succeed. We were bouncing ideas off of each other and brainstorming new fun things that would be nice to see in the space. I feel so fortunate to be almost like a little sister to these guys and to have their support along this journey. I always feel so inspired being around them. You should always feel better about yourself and life when you're with your friends. If that's ever not true, cut them loose, okay? It's not worth the energy spent and to have people that are absolute energy vampires around you. After dinner, we went for ice cream and it was delish. After an awesome couple days with all of my friends, it's now time to make my way over to Brooklyn, over to Charm HQ. It was so nice to be in the office again. It kind of felt like I never left. Oh, hey! It's totally not my stuff right there. <laughs> what are you doing here? What? Wait, wait. Yours? Wait, yours? 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 We're currently having the issue where when you're using a select or a multi-select, when you have content that wraps, it'll cut off the rest of the content that doesn't fit in the current viewport height. And the viewport height is not being calculated based on wrapped lines. So I figured out the viewport calculation with wrapped lines and I've got the wrapping looking much better. Like it's, it's adding the prefix to the wrapping as well. The main issue right now is before we're checking whether or not there needed to be an offset, meaning whether we're basically like scrolling through the content, it would check that based on whether the cursor equals the viewport height. But the viewport height is how many lines or cells high is the viewport. Now that it's wrapping, I could have a viewport height of six and then my cursor is four, okay? We'll say my cursor is at four. There's four values in the list, but the height of that list is eight. I need to add, I think, a, an additional function to distinguish between what's viewable, potentially. It never sets the offset. The condition to actually make it scroll down is never being met. I think I need a list of what the visible items are. And then I'm gonna have to refactor this because currently everything that I was doing is for the multi-select. I was just trying to get it to work in one field. But I think I'm gonna have to figure out if I can actually have the group handling this behavior. So basically fields belong to a group and a group is a collection of fields. So it might have a, a select, a multi-select. Uh, that's literally, that's all in my brain right now. That's the, those are the only two fields I can think of. Okay, so you have that group. And currently the group actually does manage the height and width of the field based on the terminal window size. The only thing is I do need to trigger a like updating the viewport size on the window resize as well, because that was not happening. So I've got a few changes that I've made that have fixed a lot, but we're not fully there yet. It's funny because I was just filming me walking you through this code and I realized that I think this change, I was incrementing the offset up until we got to the index. But it's funny because I was so convinced that this was fixing something, but I think I, what I actually, the actual underlying problem is something that I discovered later and then fixed. So when I was just reviewing this on the camera, I was like, wait, this is actually the same. This is the same. Anyway, so we're going to skim over that part. Uh, basically, I changed around the calculations more clear in my brain. Is it actually more clear? Don't know. What I did end up fixing to get that whole thing working 
The group is where we're handling actually all the resizing when the terminal window is being changed. So the width was actually never getting set on any of the content. So I did add a width width function. Essentially, I wanted to get the margins and border padding if there's any of that set on the style for that field i wanted to account for that and factor that into the available width that the text has so that the wrapping would be accurate because of this i actually ended up touching all of the field files because there was no way for me to actually get the theme for each of the fields so we did decide that that was something that was worth exposing on the api so that if there are any kind of constraints based on the styling you could actually access that so I did end up touching all of the fields but this change actually did be, end up being pretty small in scope of course throughout the process it you know gets you get your creative freedom it gets a little messy there was another branch I just fully deleted but it's all part of the ideation and designing software so that was great Another thing that I ended up taking out was this max statement. So this G dot height, what I found was with the wrapping, I would resize it to be really narrow and then widen it again. And then it was maintaining that height and just using a lot more white space than it needed to in the terminal window. So realized this was a no go. So we popped that one out. Another thing that we needed to account for is that this full height function was actually not taking into account any of the new lines. So here you can see that I created a constant so that if we decide that the gap value will change, it will adapt the full height to also change. This I believe actually fixed, there was an off by one error that we were getting where the title was always getting cut off if the contents exceeded the height of the terminal window. So this actually did end up helping to fix that that was a fun little discovery originally i was just working on the select field and then i realized that this issue actually affects all fields not just the select and multi-select so then i went through all of them and was just trying to figure out and ultimately being able to just keep it simplified and all be happening on the group level was really nice and again just getting used to having everything abstracted the way that it is and designed in this code base was a bit of a feat here the form i just updated the field interface which all of these fields implement to include that api change that the the theme function that returns a pointer to the theme and then this was also an off by one i believe so i think it was a combination of it was like this condition combined with the gaps also not being accounted for were causing some rendering issues so with this change, this minus one, I maybe will change that to be a constant. It's, it's just the help menu. The help menu at the bottom takes up one cell height worth of content, one row. And then the rest of these, I think, are mostly just me exposing the theme for the view function for a bunch of these fields. What I ended up having to do is adding a width to the style that would allow it to actually wrap the text in a nice way. One thing that I did run into is some, but not all of the fields, I believe it's the select, confirm, and text input. All of those have the option to be done in line. So I'd actually made all these changes and then ran the tests and then the tests were failing. And I realized that I didn't account for the fact that when it's in line, we obviously don't want it to wrap. We want it to all just stay on one. It's funny, it ends up being pretty simple, but like, my notes solving this thing was like so chaotic. You know, the creative process of coding. It is a creative endeavor, I swear. Nobody can convince me otherwise. But that's the update. So I'll continue on with the New York vlog. I thought some of you would probably be interested in how I solved that. I was lucky I got to be there for Charm's fifth anniversary and so we had a little party in the office to celebrate and it was super fun christian's wife made a cake and it was delicious birthday birthday to happy, happy birthday to oh no no happy birthday dear Charm. happy birthday to you
And then that was the end of my New York trip. I had another full day of work and then headed off to the airport to head home. I hope you all enjoyed this New York vlog. I hope that it inspires you to surround yourself with people who uplift you rather than pull you down. And I hope that this is a nice start to what's now the new year. I really wish for all of you to just be surrounded by people that inspire you and allow you to keep moving forward with whatever your goals are. I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.